afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to one of my Civil Air Patrol videos. Now, in today's video, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about what is Civil Air Patrol. Now, I have made a few videos on like the Learn to Lead series or Aerospace Dimensions, even Shining Shoes, Wearing Your Uniforms, Customs and Courtesies. And if you already know what Civil Air Patrol is and you want more information on any of those categories, feel free to check them out. I will include a few links in the description and in the iCard. So I'm going to basically summarize what Civil Air Patrol is, talk a little bit about the main missions of Civil Air Patrol and different opportunities that you can take advantage of after the, the whole COVID thing is over. Civil Air Patrol has three main missions, aerospace education, emergency services, and cadet programs. And I'm gonna break each of these down just a little bit. First, aerospace education is to provide members the opportunity to fly. Whether it be orientation rides with cadets, they get five free flights if you join for powered and five free flights for glider. So if there is the availability of both of those aircraft, cadets can fly in those for free based off of Air Force funding and they can actually like control the airplane. There's also the opportunities for senior members to be Form 5 pilots, so if they have a number of hours done, they have their private pilot's license, they can always be a Civil Air Patrol pilot and eventually build up enough hours, or if they have enough hours, then they can serve as, like, transport mission pilot or, um, a, like, a pilot for a search and rescue mission. And so that starts to go a little bit into emergency services, but all of the missions are connected in Civil Air Patrol because it's just the whole organization. So aerospace education, like promoting model rocketry and having like a model rocketry badge where if you pass a certain number of tests and you complete like a specific type of rocket and you build them and you launch them, then you can earn a badge as a cadet. So there are a lot of different activities available within aerospace education which is a lot of fun and people are supposed to get interested in STEM related careers through the aerospace education side of the program. So the next portion of it is emergency services. Now emergency services is like looking for missing people, serving as disaster relief and just serving the community in any needs that it has. So there's something called pods that Civil Air Patrol has helped with, which is points of distribution, which is typically where they distribute like very important essential supplies to those in the community that need it. So there's some like COVID response stuff where um, Civil Air Patrol members have helped with distribution centers of food and supplies to those families who may need it. And that, that goes into that emergency services component where we are service oriented, it's all volunteer based, and we, we're just putting the needs of others before our own as Civil Air Patrol members. There's also ground team and air crew. Ground team is the boots on the ground where everyone who's on a ground team gets to look through a forest for maybe a missing aircraft or looking for a missing person. Like there was an example a few years ago where there was uh, a lost individual who is like in the forest near King's Dominion and they had just like wandered away. And I think it was a child who had some kind of, um, who had, had some kind of condition that prevented them from like paying attention or being able to really be cognizant of the environment around them. And we were able to successfully find that individual. So there are, that, well, there's that side of it where you can be on the ground, and then there's also the air side. So I had mentioned aerospace education, but there's also the emergency services component to it. So, like, delivering uh, COVID tests has been done using the Civil Air Patrol airplanes where they put the specimens onto the plane, and then they are flown over to a specific location that's closer to, like, a testing, or not a testing site, but... Um, a point where the tests or the specimens can be reviewed and uh, tested. So that's part of it. And then there's also like disaster relief. So like having the airplanes go up in the air and take pictures of hurricane damage. Um, when there was some stuff in Puerto Rico, there were several airplanes from across the country that had volunteer pilots cross the, the Gulf of Mexico and take pictures and help deliver supplies to remote parts of the islands that needed support and assistance. 
So that is kind of the emergency side of, or the emergency services side of Civil Air Patrol. And then there's cadet programs, which I would argue to say is one of the broadest categories in Civil Air Patrol's missions. But this section is essentially the education, training, and development of cadets to be better prepared for leadership opportunities and be more well-rounded as a whole. So cadets are between the ages of 12 to 18, and if you join between 12 and 18, then you can stay as a cadet until up to 21. Like I stayed in up to being 21. And then after that, members are required to be a senior member. But if you join between 18 and 21, then you're required to be a senior member. Anyway, so cadets have the opportunity to promote. So they take tests in aerospace, leadership, and they, they sometimes have to write essays, depending on how high they are. If they're higher up, they have to typically write an essay of some kind. And, well, some kind of writing assignment. And there's also physical fitness testing. And the physical fitness testing is based off of the, well, it's called the healthy fitness activities. And it's, it's basically like if you think of the Presidential Fitness Award and the, the testing that is required for that, it's the same sort of like with the cadence where you do the sit-ups and you have like the piece of tape on the ground and then you have your fingertips on one side of the tape and then you go up and down and then push-ups on a cadence and it's like down up one down up two and <laughs> then there's also like the pacer in the mile so then you have to pass a certain number of them in order to get credit for it as you get higher up in the ranks but earlier on it's just kind of like a you try it out and you try to improve your score. So it, it depends on where you are in the program that determines how, how well you have to perform in order to pass. So that summarizes the cadet program. Now I'm gonna talk about opportunities available to everyone. So there's some uh, summer activities, they're called NCSAs or National Cadet Special Activities. And there's also like encampments, which are typically on the wing level and sometimes in like the, the general area. And there's also like regional cadet leadership school. You first have to attend an encampment as a cadet before you can attend NCSAs. So encampment is typically a seven to nine day activity where you learn all aspects of cadet life, like wearing your uniform properly, living a healthy lifestyle, and you learn about aerospace related careers and some cyber related careers while also pushing yourself beyond your comfort, comfort zone where you get to just challenge yourself in a bunch of different scenarios. Like sometimes there's sims that you get to participate in or you might get to do a rappel tower or an air assault course, which is basically like an obstacle course with giant wooden things that you have to like pull yourself over or like a rope that you have to try to climb up. And it's a lot of fun. Now, each wing has a slightly different style of encampment depending on the facilities that are available. However, they're, they're supposed to follow an encampment handbook, which is like a, a handbook that discusses a certain number of contact hours or like how much time they're supposed to spend on what thing for the cadets. So that's, that's generally how the encampments go and it just varies slightly in like the styles in which they conduct it. Like um, some encampments have a little bit higher intensity or they might have yelling and then some encampments are trying to shift it a little bit more towards like leadership development by modeling positive behaviors and trying to like shift your mentality and challenge you to make it a very positive experience. Now I'm not saying either is better than the other, but like psychology says that uh, not yelling is more effective. So I might be a little bit biased, but I refuse to yell at anyone because it just isn't effective and it can scare people or lose respect. So I don't, and if if that's something that is interesting to you, then uh, we can always have a quick discussion in the comments if you're interested in talking more about it. But anyway, that's just part of my leadership philosophy and it's a little bit of a tangent. So encampments, they're, they're that nice long activity over the week and they typically have orientation rides as well where you go up in the plane and you get to fly it depends on the availability of pilots and sometimes they might have military aircraft orientation rides like one year we had chinooks and blackhawks and we did the entire encampment in the chinooks because it's like a bay where you sit down on the floor 
And then the Blackhawks, I think we got to get through three quarters of the encampment because of the way the schedule worked, but we had most people go through it. So depending on the encampment, you might have that kind of opportunity to do it. And it shares the aerospace related careers where you can be a pilot. So that that's pretty cool. Another one that I had mentioned was RCLS, which is the Regional Cadet Leadership School. And this is supposed to be a requirement in order to promote past uh, cadet major and to get to cadet lieutenant colonel in the cadet program and something I did forget to mention is for encampment if you want to be a cadet officer which means promote to cadet second lieutenant you have to attend encampment at least once as a student as and it can be any grade before cadet chief master sergeant but you can't promote after chief until after you have completed encampment so I'm just putting that out there for RCLS um, you're required to do that if you want to get to Cadet Lieutenant Colonel or your Acre achievement. And it's a fun activity where you get to learn higher levels of leadership, like learning about delegation, going a little bit more in-depth about feedback. And I have helped run RCLS before, and I personally have enjoyed it because it's just a great opportunity for some of the older, matured cadets to meet each other from across the region and sometimes between regions. Sometimes people from outside the region get to come together and just hang out, do some fun things. Right now it's online, but you know, I think it's still a good experience because you get a lot of speech experience where you practice public speaking, presenting ideas, and you get to meet new people. So that's something that's fun. And then there are NCSAs which are National Cadet Special Activities, which you do need to in attend encampment for before you can actually attend them. And after completing encampment, you can do a wide range of them. There's some relating to engineering, there's some relating to flying and doing like an academy where you get to fly airplanes for a week or you get to fly gliders for a week and you might even solo afterwards. Um, there's one called IACE where you get to go to a different country if you're selected, but you have to be a cadet captain or higher in order to attend it. So there are a lot of different opportunities with NCSAs. And if you're a senior member, you can volunteer for any of them. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. That is all I have for this video, everyone. If you are interested in hearing more information, um, I will be doing a secondary video after this talking a little bit about the core values and kind of like what Civil Air Patrol is in addition to what I talked about in this video. So thank you so much for watching. And that is all, folks. Until next time. Toodles.